In the context of the Apostle Peter's epistle to the early church, 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 15 serves as a crucial instruction, guiding the believers in their conduct amidst the societies they inhabit. This verse states, For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. This directive highlights a profound strategy not only for personal sanctification, but also for effective witness and societal engagement. Understanding the will of God as presented here is foundational. The phrase, for this is the will of God, emphasizes the importance and divine backing of the subsequent advice. It isn't merely a suggestion or a humanly devised tactic. It's presented as a directive stemming directly from God's desires for His people. The purpose of this directive is particularly strategic and insightful. It's about silencing opposition, not through forceful rebuttal or argumentation, but through the undeniable witness of good works. By doing good captures the essence of the Christian ethic. In the broader biblical context, doing good encompasses a range of behaviors that reflect the character and teachings of Jesus Christ. This includes acts of charity, justice, mercy, and integrity. It is about embodying the virtues of the Sermon on the Mount, living out the fruit of the Spirit, and demonstrating the love of Christ in practical, visible ways to the surrounding world. The intended result of these good works is to silence the ignorance of foolish men. The word silence here is powerful, suggesting that righteous living can stop detractors in their tracks, making it hard for them to justify their criticism or opposition. The ignorance of foolish men refers to misunderstandings or misrepresentations of the Christian faith, often perpetuated by those who either do not understand or who willfully distort the gospel's implications. The ignorance is not just a lack of knowledge, but also includes a willful rejection or misinterpretation of what the gospel stands for. Applying this scripture today involves several practical steps. First, there is the recognition of our role as ambassadors for Christ. Every believer is called to represent Jesus in every sphere of life, whether at home, in the workplace, or in the public square. This representation is not merely about avoiding wrongdoing, but proactively doing good. It's about seeking opportunities to serve, to give, to encourage, and to build up others in a manner that honors God. Moreover, this approach requires a deep commitment to personal integrity and public virtue. It challenges believers to examine their lives critically and ask if their actions would stand up to scrutiny, not just legal or societal scrutiny, but more importantly, divine scrutiny. Are our lives marked by the goodness that stems from a deep relationship with Christ? Are our decisions, our business dealings, our relationships, and our public statements reflective of His teachings? This proactive doing of good as a means of witness also calls for courage and consistency. It may be countercultural to prioritize integrity over expediency or to choose honesty in a world that often rewards deceit. However, these choices are powerful testimonies to the transformative power of the gospel. They serve as a beacon of hope and a signpost to a different way of living that invites others to explore the faith that underpins such a lifestyle. Additionally, doing good as a method to silence opposition requires wisdom. Believers must discern what good looks like in each situation. It involves understanding the heart of the gospel and applying its principles to the complexities of modern life. This might mean advocating for justice where there is oppression, providing for needs where there is lack, and always speaking the truth in love. Finally, this verse invites believers to engage in the world with a mindset of victory. While opposition may come, the confidence in the effectiveness of good works to silence critics provides a proactive and positive approach to Christian witness.
It reassures believers that their labor in the Lord is not in vain and that even when they face slander or hostility, their steadfast commitment to doing good can have a profound impact on the hearts and minds of those around them. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 15 offers a strategic and spiritually empowered approach to Christian living and witness. It challenges believers to reflect Christ not only in avoiding evil, but more so in actively doing good. This behavior serves not only to build up the church and benefit society, but also to effectively counteract and correct the misconceptions held by its critics. It is a call to live out the gospel in such compelling ways that those who oppose it might ultimately be left without justification for their criticisms and perhaps even be drawn to the truth of Christ themselves.